Well, the big news of the week for Australian investors, as we were saying, Telstra announcing it will slash its dividends, putting an end to its policy of returning almost all its underlying earnings to shareholders. Well, for more, I spoke with Roger Montgomery from the Montgomery Fund. Roger, welcome back. You've kind of broken your arm, and I've just done it. I'm a bit further along than you. Yes, uh, no, I, I, I did it in sympathy. Oh, um, God. Um, mine, was, mine was doing something fun. Yes. Well, mm. anyway, on we go. Result season. The big story, obviously, was Telstra, the dividend yes. story. Yes. Yeah, so you, you know that we've talked about Telstra for years, mm. and it hasn't grown its profits for 17 years. In fact, the, the profit of the company this year will be, you know, a few hundred thousand dollars, if you adjust for a few things, a few hundred thousand dollars more than it was in Is that putting the NBN deal to one side or including... The NBN deal, the NBN deal is, is, offers some cash flow that replaces loss. So you have to understand that on a net basis, there's probably no value change there. The profit figure of the company, the, the revenue figure of the company over the last 17 years has grown from $18 billion to $26 billion, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. but the profit figure is 3.8, and it was that back in 1999. Mm -hmm. So it's no surprise that if the company decides, if the board decides they want to grow, mm -hmm. they need to start retaining some profits. So that means a cut to the dividend. Mm -hmm. So it's something we've been warning about for a long time, and here we are. Mm -hmm. In fact, in 1990... But, it, but investors should actually accept this, shouldn't they, if they want their company to grow? Well, the point is that investors have mistakenly... The baby boomers have mistakenly chased high-yielding companies instead of chasing companies that are growing their dividends. And if you're chasing a high-yield company that isn't growing its dividend, the result is, of course, that your purchasing power is eroded. So whatever bottle of wine you could afford in 1999, you're on clean skins today. So, you know, the reality is that Telstra is one of those companies that was a bond at the risk of losing its coupon. And that's precisely what's happened. All right. Well, they'll just sit on that, I suppose, those investors. Now, property, there's been a lot going on because Indeed. of China. We've just saw last week uh, Dalian Wanda. Uh, we saw it graphically with Goldfields House and how they're re-engineering, how they approach that. Mm. Uh, what does this... Uh, what impact does it have more broadly? Well, what's happening in China that, that in Australian residential real estate investors need to understand is that the Chinese government has cracked down on overseas direct investment that isn't related to the One Belt, One Road uh, policy or strategy or initiative. Mm. Uh, and as a result of that... So that includes Australian real estate, you That includes Australian <laughs> residential real estate. So, yeah. so, so blatantly investing in things for profit is not good enough. It needs to be investing for the future of the country and for the benefit of the people of China, and they believe that that's this one belt, one road policy. Yeah. And so re real residential real estate in Melbourne and Sydney and Brisbane doesn't cut the mustard. So we're talking about an 84% decline in outbound direct investment in real estate from China globally, uh, and that, that's going to particularly affect Canada, it'll affect uh, New Zealand, and it's going to have a big effect on Australia. Mm. So we're looking at something like a change from about $32 billion last year, and the expectation is less than $20 billion this year. So, so how is that going to affect the, I suppose, the tension in the market? Well, a lot less tension. Mm. So a lot more property. Remember, the supply issue is still there. So there's a lot of supply coming on market, but a lot less uh, demand. Uh, and that means prices generally, I mean, it's Economics 101, yes. you know, you get higher supply, lower demand, that means lower prices. Yes. Uh, and that's what I've been writing about now for some time. La layered over the top of this, of course, is the, is the mortgage issue. I mean, we're yes. all very indebted, aren't we? So we have a huge amount of debt. And in fact, in this reporting season, we've seen, you know, quite optimistic results from the likes of Harvey Norman, oh, sorry, JB Hi-Fi yeah. and Nick Scarly. But in the future, what we're going to see is we're going to see much tougher uh, tougher performance from those companies or more difficult issues. Uh, and the reason why is quite simple. Your biggest, your second biggest employer in Australia is the construction industry. We have not yet seen a peak in construction activity, but we've seen up yeah, to... Yeah, all the cranes are up there. And, correct. Uh, yeah. But we've already seen an up to 40%, depending on the state, an up to 40% decline in approvals and commencements. Now, 12 months' time, that feeds through to construction activity. That means contractors, largely they're contra contractors in the industry, they're going to be underemployed, they're going to have less work, and they've all got mortgages, and that's going to have a direct impact on the retail sector, which is the third biggest employer in the country. And so we're going to see some, some tough times for Australia. Mm. 
Banking, obviously. Yes. Uh, we've a lot in the news with CBA, mm. obviously. Short-term issue, that one. Yes, but more broadly, um, the, the whole issue of risk and uh, yes. mortgage risk. So, so what we've seen, let, let's just take a step back. Two years ago, in June, July of 2015, 47.6% of all new mortgages written were interest only. This year, APRA imposed on the banks a requirement that of all new loans written, no more than 30% could be interest only. Mm. So in three years' time... And they've time, been sticking to that, the banks, haven't they? Obviously? Well, from the 1st of July, yeah. yeah. And that's, that's, it's a requirement. Mm. So, so, it, so what's happened now is that all those loans that were written two years ago, they were five-year terms, in three years' time, we're going to see a very significant number of, of mortgagors um, being forced onto principal and interest. Now, at current interest rates, so forget about interest rates rising, at current interest rates, that's up to a 40% increase in repayments. So the pressure on the consumer is going to be enormous. There's a huge deleveraging cycle coming from Austra for Australia, mm -hmm. and this is bigger than the impact of Amazon on retailers. So the outlook for retail stocks uh, is quite dire. Mm. Well, at the moment, we seem to have quite a uh, soft consumer sentiment. Compared to business confidence, business oh, confidence is quite good. And so I don't know you think why business yeah. confidence is so strong when the consumer is so weak. They're relying on the consumer. Yeah. And, and the consumer is weak. No wage growth. We've got enormous increases in energy bills. I pay... 58 cents per kilowatt hour for my electricity, so I'm getting that changed. But Berkshire Hathaway this year... Well, what, on, the, on the advice of the Prime Minister. Indeed. Yeah. Thank you, Malcolm. <laughs> um, and, uh, and, and, and in the United States, Berkshire Hathaway bought a three-year, whole, admittedly, wholesale contract, but a three-year contract from a solar array provider of electricity for 3.9 cents per kilowatt hour. Mm. And I'm paying 58. So we are really, really under, under the pump here in Australia as a consumer, and that's going to mean we're going to pull our heads in, we're going to have to pay down our debts, and that's going to be tough for the consumer but the business and for banking credit growth. Business confidence, on the other hand, is quite strong. Maybe it's because the profits are there and they're not feeding down for to now. <clears throat> for now. So it's not forward-looking, perhaps. Perhaps they're looking at conditions right now and they look, they look rosy. Yeah. But maybe we're looking at the best of times and the future is going to be significantly oh, different. Oh, you're being a very c big Cassandra today. Yeah. But I've been right every other time so far, <laughs> Tiki. Roger Montgomery will come in and check on you. I hope you're not right. Indeed. Thank you. And after the break, European markets open lower in the wake of the Barcelona terror attack. Live to London next.